All right, Ronan MMA, welcome back to the channel. Now, I have picked Alex Pedeta to beat Yuri Prohaska in the main event at UFC 295. I picked him to do so by way of knockout in this video. I want to go into a little bit more detail as to why that is, maybe even justify my pick. First off, I want to say I'm a huge fan of both of these guys. I'm not picking based off of who I like more. I think that both Alex Pedeta and Yuri Prohaska are two of the best additions to the UFC roster ever. I think they're two of the best things to ever happen to the UFC, especially Alex Pedeta. But regardless, if you've picked Yuri to win, perfectly reasonable. I'm not saying he can't win or he won't win or he has no chance or anything like that. But when I look at all of the evidence available or at the very least evidence that I find to be relevant, I feel as though it favors Alex Pereira. I've broken this down into three different aspects of Yuri Prosca's game that I find to be relevant here. I will go over them in the order that I think that they will play out or become more relevant as the fight goes on. Now, obviously, there are things in Alex Pereira's game that could benefit Yuri or that he could exploit. I'll touch on those a little bit, but obviously, I'm going to be focusing on why I think Alex Pereira can win rather than how Yuri Prosca can win. Now, the first part of his game that I want to go over is his lack of leg kick defense. Okay, Yuri has a very wide stance and is relatively flat-footed when he fights, especially compared to other guys we see with really wide stances, right? Wonder Boy's hopping up and down on the balls of his feet, jumps in and out of range. Yuri Prosca kind of slides a little bit more than he does hop in and out, or he even will plot forward, taking big strides as he's switching stances. But he is, for the most part, flat-footed and very heavy on that front leg. For these reasons, he is a little bit susceptible to leg kicks. A good example of this is the Volkan Ozdemir fight. I'm fully aware that he got finished, okay, but he did have success in a number of areas. Up until that point, the leg kicks were one of them. Now, for obvious reasons, I think that Alex Pereira, if Volkan Ozdemir can have success with leg kicks, Alex Pereira certainly can as well. He is much sneakier, faster, more accurate with his leg kicks. He attacks the calf rather than the thigh, which is what Volkan Ozdemir was attacking. He uses his leg kicks to set up more attacks Whereas guys like Volkan Ozdemir, with all due respect, I'm not trying to be demeaning in any which way, shape, or form, but he is not as sophisticated a striker as Alex Pereira. As a matter of fact, at range especially, he does most of his best work in close quarters, whether it's tight in the pocket or in the clinch even. He'll hit guys with really short shots that for some reason seem to put him down, okay? He's a power puncher. He's not a guy that is super technical at range. He's not using things to set other things up, at least not to the same degree that Alex Pereira does. For those reasons, I think Alex Pereira is going to have a lot of success with leg kicks, and I think that the leg kicks are going to aid the rest of Alex Pereira's game, as they usually do. Now, the second part that I want to focus on is how much Yuri gets hit, or I guess you could say a lack of defense overall, rather than just focusing on one specific area. Every single fight of Yuri's is a good example of this, okay? He gets hit a lot in every single UFC fight. In his rise in fights, it's it's a theme across his entire career. He has been rocked in every single UFC appearance. Uh, appearance. I don't know why I said it like that, dude. So far, okay? Now, I am aware that he recovers and finds the finish, which is something that I want to touch on a little bit later. But Yuri's, like, not fans. His stands, okay, will say, oh, maybe he doesn't keep his hands up, but he utilizes head movement and range management for his defense, no, he doesn't, dude. He absorbs as many strikes as he lands. Point blank, period. Maybe you want to say Yuri Prohaska likes to get hit. And maybe Yuri Prohaska is the only guy on the UFC roster that you can unironically use the he sees red bro argument for and not sound stupid. Maybe that's the case. I'm not even saying that it's not. But he gets hit. As much as he hits, he lands as much as he absorbs. There is no strike differential whatsoever. He uses most of his head movement when he's not in range to get hit. He'll dip down and do all these weird things because they kind of disguise his entries. Now, they're good for other things, but they're sure as shit not effective for defense when you absorb as many strikes as you land, okay? Uh, he will literally walk on to shots, too. This is the other thing. Like, he'll just throw himself in there with no defense in mind whatsoever. A good example of this is the King Mo fight. Now, I am fully aware this was eight years ago, but again, Yuri Stans really like to bring up the Vadim Nemkov fight, which was also eight years ago. It was actually the fight right before this. It might have even taken place on the same night, but King Mo knocked him out cold, flatlined him from a shot that he didn't have to set up. He didn't have to do really anything. It was one of the lowest effort KOs I've ever seen because Yuri Prosko just walked right on to a massive right hand. And he does this all the time against every opponent. While this makes for a very exciting fight style, very fan friendly, 
and maybe it's worked for him up until now, at least the vast majority of times, eventually that durability is going to run out. We've seen that from many fighters throughout the course of the UFC. Um, eventually, you're going to fight a guy whose shots you aren't okay with eating, right? And when you get hit as much as you get hit or as much as you land, eventually it's going to catch up with you. Alex Pereira also has an incredible ability to land shots with like a split second opening. So, you know, he's used to having to set shit up. I don't think he's even going to really have to in this fight. I think he's going to have to work less hard than normal to land the shots that he wants to. I think he's going to sit back, wait, and counter, if I'm being brutally honest, and I'll tell you why a little bit later, rather than when we see him having to create an opportunity for himself like at the end of the first Israel Adesanya fight, or a good example of a split second opening is the one against Sean Strickland. We know Sean Strickland's one of the best defensive fighters in the entirety of the UFC. All he needed to land that left hook was a slight feint to the right hand. No shoulder twitch, no clenched fist. He just stuck his right hand out there like that. And before Sean Strickland's parry had even finished, that left hook was on his chin, okay? I would also argue, and I don't even think that this is a hot take, that both Israel Adesanya and Sean Strickland are much better in their striking defense than Yuri Prohaska. This is played out not just with our own eyes, you can see it during the fight, but also the statistics bear this out as well. Now, the third part that I want to focus on, it, it kind of ties into the second one, but it's how often he gets hurt, wobbled, or rocked in fights. All right, now I'll concede immediately. Yuri Prohaska has a very good ability to recover, but... Since this fight was announced, I have watched back a ton of his fights a bunch of different times, okay? Like, I've watched them all multiple times. Something that I've realized, especially uh, especially the case for his UFC opponents, it's not just his recoverability. I think that it's a mixture of that and also his opponents at the time, their inability to finish the fight on the feet. So, in all instances of him being rocked, right? Volkan Ozdemir rocked him multiple times in that fight, had him staggering, wobbling, multiple times. Every single time, he crashed forward like a honey badger. He would overswing, throw himself off of balance, or he would just crash right into Yuri Prohaska, creating a clinch scenario, allowing Yuri Prohaska to recover and then get back to a safe distance and reset. Dom Reyes crashed forward like fucking Crash Bandicoot, okay? He's got the longest torso I've ever seen in my life. I've watched that fight back like 10 times in the last few days, and all I can think of is like, the guy's got no legs. But regardless... He hurt Yuri Prohaska multiple occasions also. I'm not talking about the up kick. I think he hit him with a pullback counter left hand, which is, you know, on, on the money for Dom Reyes. That's his best shot. When he crashed forward, Yuri Prohaska tried to shoot a takedown. Instead of defending that, getting back to distance and continuing to pick your shots and maybe try to finish the guy that you had doing the Kevin Lee stanky leg, he jumped guillotine, okay? I'm not trying to armchair quarterback these guys. I think they would admit that in the moment they made mistakes. Do you know what I mean? Glover Teixeira heard him multiple times throughout the course of their fight. In the fifth round, specifically, he jumped guillotine also. He also shot a takedown after he hurt Yuri Prohaska, which eventually led to him getting choked out. I think he would admit that he made a mistake. Also, something else that I've noticed watching, especially, again, his UFC opponents, both orthodox opponents, Volkan Ozdemir and Glover Teixeira, right? Dom Reyes as a southpaw. Both of them, they cracked him with left hooks all night as long as the fight lasted. Volkan Ozdemir landed multiple counter left hooks. Glover Teixeira landed counter left hooks when he was going first. It wasn't even a counter. Yuri is open on that side. Sometimes he'll put his right hand up here, but he does not ever have it tucked. And by the time he gets it up there, it's too late, man. Like, both these guys cracked him. Multiple times with left hooks. Volkan Ozdemir actually rocked him and wobbled him with a left hook. Glover Teixeira also rocked him with a left hook. So he's susceptible to Alex Pereira's best punch, literally. The punch that he's famous for. Yuri Prohaska gets hit with on a regular basis, okay? And I, as I said, I think Alex Pereira is going to sit back and wait for a counter. I don't even think he's going to press the action. I think he'll land a few leg kicks, wait for Yuri to come forward. I think that, well, I'll, I'll go over why in a little bit, but... Some recent... Okay, I'll go over it right now, actually. Um, but what I do want to say is, is unlike these guys 
who Dom Reyes is a fine striker, right? Like he can throw all of the techniques. He can throw a good body kick, except in boxing range. He can throw a high kick. He can throw a nice straight left. He can throw a, a right hook, lead hook. He's not a sophisticated striker though, right? A lot of his success is due to his physical attributes. He's an extremely athletic person. Volkan Ozdemir is not either, right? Glover Teixeira is not even known primarily for his striking. He's got pretty good boxing, but his bread and butter is that top game on the ground. We know this. Alex Pereira is not going to crash forward. He is not going to jump guillotine. He is going to keep himself at a good distance, pick his shots, and dude, find me an Alex Pereira fight where he's got a guy hurt and he doesn't finish him, right? Like you might be able to find one, I don't know, but usually if he's got a guy wa uh, rocked, wobbled, doing the stanky leg, any of that shit, it's a matter of time, dude. He'll find that shot. He's extremely accurate. And as I said, he's not going to just crash forward and allow you to like look in the first Israel Adesanya fight when he hurt Izzy, Izzy tried to tie him up in the clinch. He just shucked him off of him immediately and got back to a good distance and kept landing shots. He's not going to do what these guys did. If he has an opportunity where he's got you hurt, He's going to take advantage of it. Um, the reason why I think he's going to land that counter left hook. Now, I understand that sparring is just sparring. It's not a fight, right? But there are levels to sparring. You can go harder. You can go faster. You can go slower or softer, right? Like there's a bunch of different sparring that you can do. And I understand that it's not, it's not a fight. But that being said, Alex Pineda released some sparring footage between him and Robocop, Gregory Rodriguez. They seem to be going pretty hard, right? They were throwing pretty hard, pretty fast. Maybe not 100%, maybe not even 70%. Going pretty, pretty fucking hard for a sparring session, though, okay? In that sparring session, something that I noticed, Alex Pedeta has clearly been working on, clearly been a focus of this camp, is slipping the right hand, coming from orthodox, right? A lead right hand, so Yuri doesn't really throw a jab and then follow up with the right hand. He will lunge forward with the right hand. As he does it, he kind of switches stances into southpaw and then he'll continue a combination from there but he does like to start or enter with the right hand coming down from the hip also Gregory Rodriguez if you go and watch his fights dude is not an at-range fighter he doesn't usually keep his hands down low he's usually got him pretty up high he wants to land big counter hooks in this sparring footage Robocop in my opinion he's not doing the, a perfect job at emulating Yuri I don't know that anybody could do a perfect job emulating Yuri Prasca, but he is, in my opinion, throwing shots that I think Yuri Prasca will try to land. I think that that's what he's doing there. I think he's trying to give Alex the looks that Yuri Prasca is going to give him. As I said, the right hand, the lead right hand, not in the sense that he's in southpaw, but that he leads with it from down low, coming in at upwards trajectory. Alex Pereira has been working on, clearly, he's doing a very good job at it, at least in the sparring session, slipping it and firing back with crisp, clean counters, specifically the right uppercut. Now, he was throwing some counter left hooks in there, and I could potentially see him landing, if not one of them, but a combination of the two. But the uppercut that he keeps landing on Robocop in this sparring session, I think will be extremely relevant to the Yuri Prasca fight. He slips the uppercut super tight to his body and he just pops it up there. He lands it under the chin every single time. Perfect technique, right? This is something that we don't see from, we see a lot of guys throw uppercuts from down here, big arm punches, big windups. Alex Pedeta's keeping it tight to his body, putting everything into it without dropping his arm like that. It will land real quick. Sometimes he was following it up with a left hook. Sometimes it was the left hook and then the counter uppercut that followed. I think those specifically are going to start the, the, the chain of events that leads to Yuri Prasca getting finished. I think that he will hurt him with a either, as I said, counter right uppercut or a counter left hook off of a Yuri Prasca right hand that he leads with. And then he will finish it off from there. Because as I said, once he's got you hurt, he doesn't let those kind of opportunities go to waste. I could see him landing like one of those scissor knees on Yuri Prasca after having him hurt because of how much Yuri Prasca dips. And every time he's been hurt in the UFC, he tries to shoot. He wants to clinch up with you, right? He tries to get away. And then when guys come rushing in, he clinches up with them. I could see Alex Pereira landing some shit in that instance. Now, as I said, there are things that Yuri Prasca could exploit of Alex Pereira. One of those things is... Sometimes when he's throwing leg kicks, he can do it. 
I don't know that he's being lazy, but it comes off as that. Like, they come off as a little sloppy or just like whatever, and he'll kind of just throw them out there. If he doesn't disguise them, or if he's not throwing them fast and as sneaky as he possibly can, he could get countered off of one of those leg kicks. Alex Pineda doesn't really keep his hands all that high either. Now, he keeps them a hell of a lot higher and closer to his chin than Yuri Prohaska. But as I said, he might even want that since he's been working on slipping those right hands. Also, don't get fucking caught backed up against the fence. Yuri Prohaska, in all of his fights... Okay, the choke on Glover was up against the fence. It was off of a shitty Glover takedown after he had had him hurt, but regardless. Dominic Reyes got finished on the fence. Volkan Ozdemir got finished on the fence. If you've got your back touching that cage, Yuri Prohaska is, is at his most dangerous. So Alex Pedeta is going to have to keep an eye out for that. He's going to have to not, not allow Prohaska to back him up in that way. And uh, as I said, just be mindful when you're throwing leg kicks because... He could counter you over the top. He might want that, though, since he's been working on slipping the right hand so much during this training camp. Now, that's it, dude. Those are the reasons why I think Alex Pereira will beat Yuri Prohaska. As I said, I'm not saying Yuri Prohaska can't win, won't win, doesn't have a chance, any of that shit. He is a little crazy. He does wild shit. He throws things from angles that most people don't. Do you know what I mean? But I just think when it boils down to that, Alex Pereira has faced... So many strikers, right? 40 plus kickboxing fights, 10 plus professional MMA fights, a pro boxing fight. I think he's kind of more or less seen it all, right? Not every kickboxer has the same style. I, I don't know, man. You know, Yuri might just be able to rush forward and eat his shots, but that's not really been the case before. He has to recover and, you know, reset and then he starts having success. Whereas Alex Pereira, when he gets you hurt, that's it. Yuri gets hurt early also, by the way. Usually in the first round. Against Glover, it was later on in the fight, but regardless. Like and subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. I will see you at the next video. Bye-bye.